Hey, Scott here, Scotty's Animals. Well, Nate saw that I was setting up the camera and so he started drinking water. And that's just the way it is. I wanted to do a quick video right now. Uh, I'm in the middle of cleaning some cages and doing some guinea pig chores. And we've got an incredible, beautiful desert sunset happening out there. I got this question and I wanted to answer it while I'm thinking of it. So the question is, how many guinea pigs should I have? Now that seems kind of like a question that you'd only be able to answer yourself, but there are some things to consider when you are thinking about how many piggies should I have or how many, how many piggies are too much. Right, BB? You getting sleepy, BB? Yeah, you getting sleepy? Okay, well this won't take too long, okay? All right. So I'm a volunteer at the LA Guinea Pig Rescue and a lot of people come in and they don't have any piggies and they want piggies and they really haven't even thought about how many piggies they... You getting sleepy? You wanna come down? Come here, BB. Good boy. Yeah, there you go. So, there we are. So I'm a volunteer at the LA Guinea Pig Rescue and people come into the rescue and they don't have guinea pigs and they want to adopt some piggies from us. And one of the first questions I usually ask is, well, have you thought about boys or girls? And they'll either say, oh yes, we want boys or we want girls. Um, or they say, what's the difference? Now, some people think that maybe boys are a little more rambunctious and maybe girls are a little bit sweeter and nicer to take care of. And maybe that's true, but if you're like me and, and you've gotten to know a lot of guinea pigs over the years, you'll know that it's all about personality and that there's plenty of sweet boys and plenty of sassy, rambunctious girls out there. It's, it's really, guinea pigs are individuals and so you can't really say based on whether they're boys or girls, uh, if they're gonna be what their personality is going to be like. There are some differences when it comes to boys or girls. And so the first thing I ask people is, do they imagine just having a pair of guinea pigs or would they love to have like a big herd, you know, or, or do they plan on getting more guinea pigs in the future? So if you just wanted one pair of guinea pigs, then really you could have either boys or girls with the caveat that sometimes and it's more likely that a pair of boys will start fighting and their bonds will break in which case i would recommend that you separate them and each of them has a minimum of eight square feet so that would be a two by three grid setup so one of these here and then another one there that is two two by threes or the equivalent would be the Midwest cage, and you can check that out. And I'll put a photo of the Midwest right here, but essentially that's a minimum of eight square feet. And if you ever did have a pair of boys and they started fighting and they had to be separated, you would really wanna make sure that each of them had that as a minimum space. But assuming that maybe you found a bonded pair of boys that were older, um, or have lived together harmoniously and have proved that they are bonded, then um, a two by four would be ideal for them. And so a two by four would be this cage back here. And, and I'm talking about grid size, one, two, three, four. And these grids are bigger than a, than a foot. They are actually 14 inches. So um, a two by four actually equals 10 square feet, which is a great size for a pair of piggies. Now, in general, and if you watch my bonding rules video, so I'll put a link to that right here, you will realize that any two boys getting along, there's only about a 20% chance that you were to take any two boys, put them together, and have them actually become a bonded pair. But with girls, the reverse inverse is true, that actually 80% chance or better that any two girl guinea pigs you put together would get along and they wouldn't fight. And 
if you want to know a little bit more about what getting along is, I have a bonding playlist. So if you click on that bonding rules video, or if you go to my website, Scotty's Animals, then you will see uh, a link right on the homepage to my bonding playlist. And it goes through all the bonding rules, and then you'll see a number of bonding sessions at the rescue and then here at home. You gonna go to sleep, BB? Okay, BB. Good night. So let's just assume that we're talking about a bonded pair of guinea pigs. Now, like I said, a two by three minimum, a two by four is better, even a two by five is great. Within reason, the more space you can give your piggies, the better. It is really awesome to see them run and to see them play and to see them really get up to full speed. Guinea pigs can run really fast if given the chance, but when they're cooped up in those tiny pet store cages, then they don't even have that opportunity. So, but let's assume that you've got a pair of piggies. Now, if you had a pair of girls, then you could always add a third or add a fourth to the herd. Whereas with boys, we really recommend keeping it to a pair. Now, I do have three boys living back here, but I'll tell you what, you know, there has been lately a certain amount of turmoil, a certain amount of chasing, um, and Popeye has some scabs on his butt. Now, will they be able to work it out, or am I going to have to separate one of them out of the group? That remains to be seen, but in general, if your piggies draw blood, you want to separate them. And adding a third to your bonded pair of boys generally will result in a fight that could break up the bond that you already have. But with girls, that's not quite the case. And in fact, you can in general add as many girls as you have space for. So how many guinea pigs should you have? Well, if you're talking boys, you should have a pair of boys. Uh, and you could always add another pair, or if you had to rescue a, a boy that couldn't get along with other piggies, that boy could live happily side by side with a bonded pair of boys. Now, a lot of people ask me, why don't I have girls? Now, I have rescued girls and they were waiting to go to the rescue, and so I fostered them for a little bit of time, and it kind of caused a little bit of chaos and my piggies to be on high alert. And I don't want to cause any kind of craziness. So I would prefer that my piggies don't get worked up and that I don't have girls in this room. If I have to foster girls, then I'll usually keep them outside or have their cage mostly covered in a towel. But I would prefer to foster and uh, rescue boys only. So that's just a consideration for me. But if you're talking boys, then they need to each have their own separate cage per pair. With girls, you can just expand the cage a little bit and you can really build a big herd. Now, I would recommend you guys watch Skinny Pigs 1. Uh, I'll put a link to her channel right here. Now, she has several groups of piggies all living together. Now, some of her piggies are neutered um, some, well, obviously her boy p piggies are neutered and there is a boy that lives with every group of girls. Um, check her channel out for the specific combinations she has. Uh, in my opinion, and this is something that we all kind of have to come to this conclusion on our own. I would rather have a group of boys living side by side and not introduce girls here. Um, I don't want to deal with uh, a risky surgery but that reminds me if you but even though neutering surgery is risky and in many cases unnecessary if you can find them a bond uh, a vet a guinea pig vet that knows what they're doing should be able to handle the surgery no problem so that's just up to you if you want to go down that route. Now, I've heard many more success stories than I have heard uh, of heartbreaks, but it is a risk. And so you've got to talk with your vet specifically about that. So that's mixed pairs. But when we're talking girls, you could literally have a gymnasium 
full of fleece or pine shavings or whatever, and as many girls as you could fit in there is how many girls you could have living together. Now, in my bonding rules video, there is a part of that video where it talks about there's always going to be a dominant girl in the group. Now, sometimes that dominant piggy is very peaceful. Nate. I'm going to get you. Sometimes that, that dominant girl is peaceful, but generally speaking, but sometimes that dominant girl, when she is setting up the, uh, the pecking order, as you'd say, um, it can be quite a tumultuous experience for all the piggies involved. So in the bonding rules video, I show an example of what an extreme pecking order uh, girl bonding is like. Um, and as long as it's that level or calmer, then you really don't have anything to worry about. Girls don't generally draw blood. It's more of a, a pushing, a, a bluster and fluff kind of nose punching that doesn't actually result in anybody getting bit or hurt. It may seem crazy, but it's usually not as bad as it looks and it will resolve itself in a few minutes, a few hours, or maybe it might take a day or two, but, but it's not something to worry about. So let's take a quick break while I continue to do some of my piggy chores and I'm gonna put in some new fleece that I got from Piggy Central into Billy's cage. Okay, Bill, we gotta change this messy fleece, okay? Luckily, Linda and Jennifer from Piggy Central sent me some really sweet fleece. Oh, wow. The first thing I noticed is these feel really amazing. It's almost like tent material, like camping tent. Wow. And then check out this pattern. Ha ha ha. Billy, you're in for a treat. And look at this one. Wow, that's so cool. Dinosaurs and rockets, Billy. Ha ha ha. So here's a little tunnel with also a waterproof liner. Wow. This is a really nicely well-made tunnel. Okay, and then look at this cuddle cup. This cuddle cup, oh wow, there's a, a pad. I guess this pillow could be separate, but it fits perfectly in here also. But you could also put this anywhere. Wow, look at that. That is really incredibly well sewn. And look, this one's elephants. <laughs> you checking it out? Look at that. It's gonna be nice and cozy. Oh, we gotta turn these around the other way. There. Yeah, look at that. They're jealous in there. What do you think, Bill? Hey, Pippi. You want to go explore? Come on. Oof. Here you go. <laughs> Be good, boys. <laughs> Billy, he just made your tunnel all funky. <laughs> Someone's got the zoomies. Someone's happy to see you, Bill. You be nice to him. Get him! You wanna try this thing out? You wanna try the cuddle cup out? Will you sit still in there long enough? I bet you won't. <laughs> Look at that pillow. That is a really nice pillow. You like it? Oh, it's okay, Bill. You guys can share the tunnel. He just wants to check out your new stuff, Billy. 
You can share. You like it, Pippi? <laughs> Uh-oh. No, it's okay. You're safe in the cuddle cup as long as you behave yourself. Get in there. <laughs> what did he do to it? Yeah, it's yours, Billy. It could be yours. Well, I love the patterns and the sewing quality is really great. And it's also really cool that it has the waterproof bottom on it. So thank you so much, Piggy Central. Well, I'll put the link in the description. You guys can check out and see what Piggy Central has to offer. So thank you so much to Piggy Central for sending me this stuff. I appreciate it very much. Whose funky butt is that? <laughs> Everybody wants to be in the tunnel at the same time. Careful, Pippi. Careful. <laughs> Careful, boys. Okay, this play date's over. This play date's over. It's okay, Pipsqueak. <laughs> okay, Bill. It's all yours now. He's gone. Don't wipe your butt on it. Gross. So thank you again to Piggy Central. I will put a link in the description. That was really nice of them to send me that stuff. And wow, really nice tunnels sewn really well. I'm just really impressed. So thank you guys so much for thinking of me and thinking of the piggies. So now let's continue and let's talk about how many piggies you should have from a responsibility standpoint. Now there's 11 guinea pigs in here right now and I can tell you it's practically a full-time job taking care of them and cleaning and you know if you have more than one pig that's sick at a time then it can be a lot from a caring for them uh, perspective but also from a vet perspective. Now even getting guinea pig insurance for all these piggies, that's no chump change. It's definitely advisable and I wouldn't, you know, have guinea pigs without having pet insurance. So my pet insurance is through Nationwide. Here I'll put a link uh, to the video I did about Nationwide pet insurance. Now every year they have new policies and they have new levels of coverage. So uh, that video was done last year. So you're going to want to check and see what the new rates are, but you'd be surprised at just how helpful they can be. And not just will they reimburse you a substantial portion of your vet bills, but it's the peace of mind of knowing that it's not about expenses, it's about finding and giving your piggies the best care possible. So with that in mind, I also would definitely please recommend that you check out my free guinea pig care uh, guide on my website, start building your emergency kit and find one or two vets on my vet list and that's going to go a long way to giving your piggies the uh, protection that they need and also the, the peace of mind that you need. So how many piggies do I recommend you have or how many piggies do I want to have? Well, I want to save as many piggies as I can. Um, I would prefer that my fosters ended up at the rescue and found great homes. Now, very frequently, either I become attached or um, I end up caring for piggies like um, Ron down here. Now, I hate to say it, Ron's bumblefoot has flared up again, but it's just another reason why he didn't go to the rescue and why I've been keeping him for this long because, um, you know, I just, I wasn't sure if his bumblefoot was going to come back and he did so well with it not coming back, but then, you know, I can't believe it just it started to flare up. He's back on antibiotics. He's back on daily soaks and his foot is wrapped. And actually he's starting to get on the path of healing again, which is really good to um, report. 
but he's going to be here for a while, if not indefinitely. And, and of course I'm really attached to him and I don't want, you know, him to go somewhere where they're not going to be equipped or prepared or willing to take care of him in the kind of special care that he needs for his bumblefoot. So how many piggies should you have is how many piggies you can honestly care for. And you'd be surprised at how many messages I get that break my heart where people say, my piggy's sick, my piggy's this, my piggy's that, I can't go to the vet, I can't afford a vet. You know, for some reason, people think that they could have guinea pigs and then not take them to the vet if they're sick. It's just not right. You wouldn't get a dog or a cat knowing in advance that you couldn't pay for vet bills. Now that's part of having an emergency fund. I know times are tough. I know life, you know, has been crazy, especially this year, but it's just not fair to have animals if you're unwilling to take care of them. And taking care of them doesn't just mean feeding them food and water and cleaning up their poop it actually also involves making sure that if they're sick, you'll do everything you can to take care of them, to make them better. So, and that doesn't mean just, you know, over the counter, whatever, ointments or whatever. It means going to a vet. Now, someone actually sent me this kind of a message last week. They said, I think my guinea pig has an upper respiratory infection, but I can't afford a vet. Now, I understand that. That's First of all, this is why you should start saving a little bit here and there and build an emergency fund for anything. For you, for, you know, there's so many reasons why you should try to save, you know, a couple hundred dollars and have it in the bank just in case of an emergency. Because believe me, you know, like I said, believe me, I understand. We're all struggling to make ends meet, but having a pet means caring for them and that's just the way it is but to give you this example this person who messaged me and said i think my piggy has a respiratory infection but i can't go to a vet i said please try to find a vet on one of my website on i said please try to find a vet on my vet list and just go there and it turns out they were able to get seen by the vet and the vet gave them a checkup for free and it turned out there was no respiratory infection and everything was okay. So work with these vets, they understand and there are ways that you can pay small amounts over time even without a credit card. Um, so talk to a vet, never ignore illness and and reach out to a vet and explain to them your situation believe me you know you're not the only one that's struggling and vets understand that and and they really their primary concern is to make sure that your pets are okay and they will work with you and figure out a way so how many guinea pigs should you have as many as you can take care of but even if you can afford the vet and you can you spend all day cleaning your cages i've really found that you know i i feel bad i can't spend as much time with each individual piggy as i would love to these piggies are rescues as i mentioned and a lot of them are foster fails where i was fostering them and for one reason or another i've decided that i should keep them but I can tell you that, you know, I wish I was able to spend way more time individually with them. Um, and that is one of my big goals and priorities in life is to spend as much time with each of them individually as I can. I have to give several of them daily medicine. And just in general, I try to pick each one of them up every day and spend a few minutes with them. But you know, if you had a dog or a cat and you only got to spend a few minutes with each of them every day, you'd say, well, that's not enough. And really, it isn't enough. You know, these are our babies and I want to spend as much time as I can with them. So I would say, think about that. You know, the people who aren't involved in animal rescue and they just have an overflowing amount of animals, especially if they got them from the pet store, I just don't understand that.
you know. So you should have as many piggies as you can take care of, as you can spend as much time as you'd like to with. That's how many piggies you should have. But for all of you guys there that are in a situation like me, where you're saving animals, where hopefully some of them are fosters that you can find really good homes for, we'll never be able to spend as much time with them as we would like to. But hopefully we can spend enough time with them to keep them healthy and to keep them happy. And of course, guinea pigs should never live alone. They should always have other piggies around them so that they feel safe and secure and part of a herd. So I hope that answers the question. How many piggies should you have? As many as you can take care of or as few as you can in order to spend as much quality time with them as you want to, as you need. And also, of course, you should have the ones that you can afford to give them the best life. And that includes vet care, that includes, you know, high quality food and, you know, clean bedding. So, again, follow my free guinea pig care guide. It's on my website, Scotty's Animals. And that will basically teach you everything that I've learned in my many, many years volunteering at the LA Guinea Pig Rescue. So that resource is there for you. And of course, there's contact form on my website as well. But I would, encourage, I would definitely encourage you to read the free guinea pig care guide because your questions are probably going to be answered there or in my playlists. And you'd be surprised how often I get messages where people ask me something that Clearly, they haven't even seen either my latest video or the, read even the very first paragraph of my free guinea pig care guide. So I encourage you, please, please read the care guide. Even if you think you know everything about piggies, maybe there's something that I haven't thought of that I should add. So read through the guinea pig care guide, and then if there's anything that you want me to add, I would love to get your feedback so much. It's ever-growing, ever-evolving, and I can't do it without you guys. So thank you so much for being part of this piggy community with me. And until next time, thanks for watching. Oh, you don't have to come out for me. You don't have to come out, I'm sorry. <laughs> you look so relaxed and so cozy. <laughs>